I know you've probably had this problem where you ask your partner to do something, they agree, and then it doesn't get done. And you feel like you have to remind them or nag them or cajole them and over and over and over and finally you blow up because you're so mad because you've been asking for this thing and they've been agreeing to do it and it's never happened. And then you look like the crazy one because you're yelling at them and they're like, why are you getting so upset? Uh, if you have ever been in this situation or anything close to it where you've wa you're wanted your partner to do something, you've asked them, they've agreed and they haven't done it, then you are in the right place if you want an answer for how to deal with that. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Abby Metcalf, and I have been helping people create a lasting change in their relationships uh, It's for 35 years now. I can't believe that. There you go. Um, I started when I was 10, I like to always say. All right, so here we go. So here's the deal. If you've been asking your partner to do something, uh, let's say, hey, you know, call the plumber, okay? And they said, yeah, yeah I'll call the plumber. And then a week goes by and they haven't called the plumber and you're asking again and then another week, right? And you keep asking, keep asking, and they haven't done it. So there's a few things I want you, a few ways to handle the situation. And again, it's a common one. Um, so number one is to figure out, is this something that really has, that they have to do? That's number one. The easiest thing to do is not have them do it. So <laughs> if it's something that you can either do yourself easily or you can have hire someone else to do, uh, ask someone else to do it for you guys, or just let it go. I mean, the plumber isn't necessarily something you can let go, but there are a lot of things that seem like they have to happen that often don't. So I really want you to do that first. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, it's not fair, I do everything around here. Uh, get over the it's not fair. I, ugh, you, I can't even start on that in this video because I've done like hundreds of videos on this and podcasts and blog posts and everything else. You have to get past the competition in your relationship. I did a TED talk on this. You, that is the real rela reason relationships fail is because we are competing with our partners. It has to stop. So I'm not gonna get into that part right here. And if you want more on that, um, you have to go to my website and you can put in competition and a hundred things will come up. So there you go. <laughs> so, and I'll also try to remember to link under this video if I remember to tell my assistant that um, I wanted to do that because sometimes things happen in the video and I say, I promise I'll do this and then um, I forget to ask. Okay, so, so but we'll, we'll get there. Go to the website, abbymetcalf.com, you can get there. Okay, but here's where I, where I really want you to focus and where most of it is. So, I assign to a lot of my couples to do a weekly couples business meeting. And I do do a whole podcast on that. Again, abbymetcalf.com forward slash podcast or forward slash blog. And you can uh, hit search and you can do a search for couples business meeting. And there's all kinds of stuff there. So again, I don't wanna get too into it right here. Uh, but if you have a couples business meeting is basically where you have a once a week meeting and what I have pe couples do is create an agenda like on Google Docs or any kind of shared drive that you might have or a, a big whiteboard in your office, anything, it doesn't really matter. But, and what you do is, uh, you know, if there's a, linky, a leaky sink or the dog door needs to get fixed or someone needs to call the plumber or we have to plan uh, the kids' camps this summer, those things go on this list, this doc, this Google Doc or whatever, however, whatever you're using for that. You can use an old school notebook, I don't really care. Uh, and then once a week you come together and you go, oh, you go over. And what I love about this, and it will change your relationship for sure, is number one, you're not, uh, you know, <laughs> I've done this where I'm asking my partner constantly, hey, can you do this, can you do this, can you do this? Oh, I don't forgot about that, I forgot about that. And what happens is the other person feels like they're getting bombarded all the time with things to do, and it, just, it doesn't feel good. And it also, sometimes you're gonna ask them when they're not in the mood to hear it. So they're gonna maybe snap at you and it's a time you can have an argument. It's also a time maybe they won't remember because they were doing something else and they didn't run and write it down. Uh, it just, it sets up this thing where one of you feels like a nag and the other one feels very put upon. So we, we don't want any of that. Um, so what's nice about this is that it's all in one place. You're gonna get to it. You know you're gonna get to it so you don't have to spin. So instead of saying something to your partner in that moment, instead you just throw it on the Google Doc or whatever 
and you just know it's going to get handled and on Sunday or whatever day you decide that you're doing your couple's business meeting, you're going to talk about it then. What I also like is that it creates accountability because you don't take things off the dock until they're done. So if by the following week it's still on, you know, you say, oh, hey, how did it go calling the plumber? And your partner says, oh, I forgot, then you know it didn't, you still have a place to hold it. Now, and this is really where the conversation comes to. So I'd like you to start with the couple's business meeting. It's a great place to start and people do tend to really get on things right after that. But I'll tell you one thing that can happen is this. The, so let's say you get to that next week and, or whatever system you use, if it's not my couple's business meeting and your partner still hasn't done, called the plumber. Now, here's what I want you to think about. If you were, let's say at work, uh, Bob in accounting is really good at the primary parts of his job. Bob in accounting is really good at the accounting part of his job. He's not good at maybe supervising other people or how he interacts with some people or something else or with special projects or something, I don't know. But he's not good at something. But the main aspects of his job he's good at. And what would happen at a job like this is that you wouldn't go to Bob every week with this thing he wasn't doing for months. And I've had couples do this for months where they're bugging each other about something that hasn't happened for months. That's insane. You wouldn't go to Bob for three months every week and say, you still haven't done X, what, whatever report you're supposed to do. You would, if you liked Bob enough and he was valuable enough, you would figure out a way around it. If you're a good manager or leader, for sure, you wanna keep Bob. You don't wanna fire him over some little thing he doesn't do, uh, like taking out the garbage or whatever that smaller thing is. And so instead, you would figure out a workaround. You would find someone else to do the job, to do that little part of the job. You would <clears throat> in incentivize him in a different way. You would something. You would figure out another way to get whatever it is done. Or frankly, if you were the boss here, you'd be fired because you sucked at supervising Bob. So <laughs> now you're not the supervisor of your partner, but I hope you get where I'm going here, which is basically that it's insane to ask someone week after week, day after day to do something. And if they don't do it, to just keep asking, to just keep doing the same thing. If you keep doing what you've always done, you're gonna get what you've always got. So instead, because I talk about people in, in a relationship being partners, true partners, it means instead, I want you to problem solve with your partner. So you might come back to that next meeting and your partner says, oh, I didn't call the plumber. And you might go, oh, okay, well, so we still need to call the plumber. What do you think? What do you think could happen here? Do not come in with solutions. Do not come in with, well, what if we tried this? Or what if you did this? Or especially if you're trying to order your partner around, <laughs> what if you did this? What if you did that? But don't come in with any solutions. Instead, ask questions. And once again, I have ad nauseum videos, blog posts, <laughs> and podcasts on how to ask questions well. So again, I'm not gonna cover that here. Go to one of those other things, do a little search on my website, asking questions, you'll get 50 things. So there you go. Um, because these things are important. That's why I do these videos on them. But what I want you to do is really, again, you're a team. So you want to, you want to come together as a team and figure out what the next thing is. So you have to have an intention of love. You have to have an intention of patience and kindness, compassion. When you walk into that, you know, conversation or meeting or however you're doing this, you want to not think first, oh, what an a-hole. What a jerk. I can't believe I haven't done it again. Oh, I'm so, uh, if you go in with that attitude and that pissy, you know, I'm going to get you and I'm so sick of this and I hate you, whatever. How are you expecting a good outcome from that? Instead, I need you to feel, to think in your head, well, you know, this is maybe how my wife often is and I, I love her dearly. Or you know what? My husband's great guy. He does so many wonderful things around here and I don't know why he can't get this done, but he can't. So I want you to instead think about, wow, I'm, you know, with this person, why isn't this getting done? What is the block? And sometimes I will tell you, it's because the other person really didn't hear you about how important it was. That happens a lot. And you know it does because 
you've had this conversation with your partner where you're like, I asked you 50 times, how could you not think it was important? And your partner's like, oh, you know, like that. And you're thinking, ah, but you can't assume things about your partner. Trust me, there's a lot of stuff that comes in. It's sort of like Teflon, it kind of goes back out. And things that are important to you are not necessarily important to your partner, even if you told them, hey, this is important. They don't, I don't know how else to say this, but they don't always like hear it. It doesn't really go in and really sink in that this is really important. So I want you to stop in those meetings and really have that compassion. And I, I always say, do you want to be correct or effective? If you want to be correct, you can sit and berate them all day that they should have done this thing they promised to do. It's not very effective. If you want to be effective, you ask some questions. And there you start. So, you know, what do you think we could do next? What do you, and they might even say to you, oh, I'll just do it this week, I really will. And if it's been like four weeks and they haven't done it, then you need to call BS on that and say, you know what, it's been four weeks and let's not do that. Obviously this is difficult for some reason for you. I don't know why, but it is, it's okay. Let's think of a different solution. If it wasn't you having to call the plumber, what else could we do? And that's it. And then find out what kind of brainstorming, what kind of solutions come out of that. When people have buy-in, number one, this is why this works. When people have buy-in, in other words, that they were part of the solution, then it's very different. When people feel like someone else has kind of ordered them around, they don't like it. <laughs> you don't like being controlled by others. Your partner doesn't like being controlled by others. Nobody likes it. And so that might be really what the problem is. Probably on a very unconscious level, your partner just somehow feels put upon or like you're manipulating them or you know they're doing something that you know they shouldn't have to do or they don't want to do because you're making them do it. I don't know. For whatever that unconscious motivation likely is, and trust me, they probably don't know, it, it's driving them in the wrong way. So when you get someone to be part of the brainstorming and to really come at them with that compassion and that love and that ease and that, you know, no blame, they don't have to be defensive, you're really just curious, what can we do next? They come up, whatever answer you come up with, they often, again, have like buy-in into it. Uh, and it's such a difference with what people are willing to do when they feel like they were part of the creation of the solution to something. They then feel like, ah, you know, I'm going to do this thing. And there's tons of research on this, mostly from the business world, which I used to be in. Uh, I know when I was consulting, you know, I'd go into a business. Back in the old days, we'd go in, we'd all consult and come up with some answer and we'd make a big binder with <laughs> all the things they should do. We'd come into some department, give it to them. Okay, here's the answer to your problem in this big binder. You gotta go do these things. And then they would never do it because they didn't have buy-in. It used to be this idea that it was like the top, you know, experts had to come up with something and then you just had to go do it. And it didn't work. And what we, what was learned over the years was that you wanted to get people to give their opinions on things, to give feedback, to you know, have uh, some skin in the game. And then when you came up with some solutions with that, uh, the, it was totally different because people have buy-in. So, and having this sort of conversation is such a different thing. And what happens is that people start to listen. They start to hear you differently. They start to really key into how important or not important it is or whatever. They can say how they're feeling about it. All of these things start to happen and this is how you make change. This is how finally that friggin' plumber gets called. And I say a lot that you have to connect to correct. And so coming in with that compassion, that curiosity, that love, that we're a team, that's connecting. That's the connecting. And so now if we want to have some correction on top of that, something that's really going to work, that's where that comes from. You can't come in with just, you didn't do it, and I'm sick of this, and whatever, because there's this total disconnect, and all you end up with is defensiveness, isolation, resentment, and these are nothing you want in a love relationship, because they don't create any love. So there you have it. This is how you get through this problem if your partner is not following through on the things they said they were going to do. I'd love to hear your comments on this, you know, what you think about it, if you agree or disagree, whatever it is, you can do that below. And that's it. I'm Dr. Abby Metcalf. I help people create lasting change in their relationships, even if their partner won't do a thing.